Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with the legendary Jason Bonham. Jason, how are you today? I am very, very good. Thank you very much. I you... just come back from a bicycle ride, so uh, if I look a little flushed, it's purely because of that. Was it a joy bicycle ride or like exercise? I look at it as <laughs> my wife. The, uh, it was the start of the new year, and she's like, "Come on, you got the COVID 50 uh, <laughs> was more of my thing. Uh, uh, not like the college fifteen. It was the COVID fifty. Yeah. So, uh, but I then decided, you know, I came back with one of these bikes that's assisted. You know, nine forms oh. of assisted, and it looks like an old, you know, Harley Davidson. And she's like, "Really? That's your form of exercise?" I went, "I don't have to have it help." But it's only when there's a headwind. Yeah, it's only when it's uphill and it's yeah. uh, 4, 9 a.m. There's like a yes. rule. So All right, so we've got big stuff to talk about here. Um, Sammy Hagar and The Circle. You guys have a new album out. It's the... Uh, the lockdown 2020, and these are all the different recordings you did in 2020 during lockdown, right? Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much in this room that we are in. Um, it was one of those things we started the conversation, and, and you probably were the same. You remember when the initial first lockdown period, when we all were like so ambitious about what we were going to do in those two weeks or in that month? So we, we were all talking. Take up knitting, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, you, you remember the list, you know, we were all like, oh, so yeah, the, two, that two weeks, how will we ever survive? Two weeks, oh. <laughs> I mean, after like three days, you start, because when you're told you can't, it's, it, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. So yeah. you start, like, okay, I'll do this, I'll tidy this up. And, and then after a while, we start texting and Sammy goes, well, let's, let's play. And I'm like, well, what? And he goes, just send me something. So literally, yeah, it was the iPhone recordings. Yeah. And literally, that's kind of how it started. We, we didn't plan for this, I think, to come out as a product at the time. It was each week was just a different bit of fun to keep us occupied and stop from going nuts. So, so the first song that you recorded, it was the, um, the feng shui one, right? Yeah, the backstage, backstage jam. Um, I was never a backstage jammer before uh, Sammy. Uh, I was always like, yeah, I want to go on stage and play and be into it. But he always likes to warm up. Uh, and it's something that I've, one of the things that he's brought to me is it's great to have. So we have a setup backstage and we jam for a good hour before we even go upstage. So uh, a lot of fun. And we jam everything from ACDC to what are Rolling Stones to just our own stuff uh, if we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, an ending or whatever. So that was just a jam, what we used to do backstage. It was a new idea that Sammy had and we used to play it backstage. So that's how it started. I said, do you remember that jam that we used to do? And played the drum part and the next thing you know, it was boom. So then, then of course, So, so yeah. you do this first jam, it, it goes all right, decently well. Yep. You hit record, everything's, you know, no big hiccups. And you decide, let's do it again the next week. And each week thereafter, you start choosing different songs. Um, I think the album is made up of 11 songs. The latest release is uh, a cover of Heroes by David Bowie. By the way, yep. I love the music video. Were you psyched when you saw it for the first time? Uh, very much so. Um, I feel very, uh, Sammy hates me for doing this. Uh, <laughs> that was a song I... I... I won't say I. I put it forward in April, and and it kind of was pushed back. So I was so thrilled that I kind of did a demo of it um, on the iPad, <laughs> which is hilarious, and sent it to Sammy and said, come on, this could be so good. So um, And then when he finally did the, the vocals on it, he actually... Uh, he was surprised himself because he doesn't sing that low. So that first verse, um, it was, I would just had goosebumps. My wife was like, that's not Sammy. <laughs> and then suddenly go, he goes to the, like the, I always like to say it was like, it's like as if Springsteen had covered it. It's got that, it's got really? that like, Hey, kind of vibe to it. Um, yeah. so I was so pleased. And that still to me is, uh, they just got better and better and better. 
And, and you could tell because they started to be longer. Instead of them just being like a two-minute or a one-minute stunning, we started to get into it, and, and it, it was growing, and we were saying this could be more than just our lockdown sessions or at-home sessions, as they were called. But the video, I mean, we have such an amazing team of people behind us that it is we just send them these iPhone <laughs> iPhone videos of us playing. And there's nothing much more. Uh, I can't do much more. My wife doesn't come and film me, so it's a static cam normally. So I was fortunate to have a friend over at the time who who managed to film, and I was in a different. I was doing a session actually in Nashville, and he. I said, "Can you just film me over doing this one song?" And the guy had no idea what song I was doing, so I just said, "One pass, just just move around, so they have something other than just me playing the drums." Um, so yeah, I mean, it came out absolutely fantastic. So with uh, those of you just joining us, I'm Katie Darrell and he is Jason Bonham. We are at Home and Social. Uh, we're talking about the new album. It is Lockdown 2020 from Sammy Hagar and The Circle, um, a variety of covers that the band did. Um, okay, so the band, obviously we have Sammy Hagar, we have yeah. you, we have um, Michael Anthony, oh, cool. um, we have Vic Johnson. Uh, which of you is the most difficult to get to record their parts? We're always waiting on who to send their file. Me. <laughs> um, uh, most of the time, probably be me. Because I was all enthusiastic at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And then when you have your dip, you know, when you're feeling socially distant, mm -hmm. as you don't, you're not in that uppity beat mood that you want everybody else's and you're going, let's do this. So I'm like... Really? Uh, you lost the momentum first. Yeah, I'm like, mm. or, or I was just being a sport child, like saying, well, I don't really like that song, so why should I do it? You know, so, well, yeah, so it was tough. Yeah, it was There's tough. 11 tracks on the album. Uh, you've done everything from, obviously, uh, David Bowie's Heroes. I think there's some ACDC. Um, what else? There was... Bob uh, Marley. Bob Marley, Three Little Birds, uh, For What It's Worth, uh, Some Who... Which ones did you raise your hand and suggest, or was it all? Was, did Sammy bull, bulldoze it and pick all of them? Sammy chose. Every, Sammy chose everything. Which ones do you like? I'll tell you which ones I chose. No, yeah, tell me which ones you like, and then I'll tell you which ones I chose. No, I, I mean, uh, listen, I love the Buffalo Springfield uh, for what it's worth. That's Sammy. So that's timely. Sammy. Oh, actually, that might be Mike. Oh, that really? was Mike and Sammy. That was a Mike and Sammy um, collab. And Mike Steele's, don't you think Mike Steele's the show in that one? Because he doesn't have the bass. All right. the way through it, he's kind of doing his thing and then goes, wait a minute. Puts the bass. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And I love um, Three Little Birds, Bob Marley. Uh, that's just such a... Um, such a happy song. Um, wow. Sam, so I like I like that Sammy curated a lot of those. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I was I'm the serious one. So I was like, you know, I was like going for the 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 big, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, what's love got to do, like from certain from balance and that, you know, the big songs that had big drums, you know. But Vic, like Vic, Empire of Dirt nine inch nails in there, man. Yeah, I mean I I had a list we put it this way, it isn't over yet. Sammy texted me last night, actually called me after a couple of cocktails and yeah, was like, course. let's keep going. Let's just keep doing it. Baby. Yeah. So I've been sending him multilingual messages uh, that in different languages uh, just, to, <laughs> just to confuse him even more, you know, just like there's an app to, you know, to translate it. But yeah, I mean, he's, he, well, if, people, if somebody doesn't know Sammy Hager, how could I explain being around him? You you don't have time to be miserable. You don't have time to be sad. He is the most upbeat, positive person I've ever worked with in my entire life. And I work with a lot of different people. He is such a genuine, what you see is what you get. There isn't an act. It's not false. Mm -hmm. He is the same way all the time. Um Hugely generous. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, and it's really, for an English person who always sees the glass half empty, Sammy always sees it half full. So he's always, come on. So 
He knows when I go silent on him, he's the one that goes, come on, let's do this. Uh, it's the same for everybody. Let's just do another song and just keep, you know, being positive. All right. So I need, I, I'm going to go uh, back to the archives and talk about some old school uh, Jason Bonham stuff. Let's uh -oh. talk about the, uh, the time you were in that movie Rockstar. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. that was definitely... First off, I love that movie. I love Mark Wahlberg, who doesn't? Um, for those of you who have not seen this movie, you definitely should uh, dust off the old VHS and take a look at it. But I mean, I, I love this movie. I love the idea of rock and roll and rock stars and what happens when, you know, a, a lead singer leaves a band. Um, how do you feel about that when bands, the, the rotating, you know, band members, and at what point is it no longer the original band and just a tribute? Well, that's a tough one. That's, yeah. a, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I was in, you know, I was in Foreigner when I first came up to the States in, uh, I first moved here to live here in 2005. And I just joined the band Foreigner, which at the time, I won't say joined, I, I said to Mick, put the band back together. So, um, so that was, you know, that was a tough one. If you, if you say, it, when does it become this? But the how great a singer Kelly is, yeah. and the songs are so amazing. And you know, there's a couple of guys in the band now that've been do, have been with Mick for thirty years, and now they've got the other members coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like the collection of both. I mean, it was. Uh, it's, I think it's how good you do the music. If, you, if you're not going out there and, and doing it as good as it did night after night, I don't think Foreigner would have come back to where they, they are now. Um, I was great. I was so glad to be a part of the beginning of that reinsurgence again uh, in 2000. And, and Mick was, I love always working with an older, you know, an older fatherless figure type guys, um, like Sammy, like Mick Jones, uh, Robert, Paul, Jimmy, all of them, uh, and Mick's the same. We became very, very good shopping buddies, <laughs> he'll tell you. If you ever ask Mick, say, Jason said, do you remember the time you went to the mall and it was like a competition who could spend the most money? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we we did. And he always used to, he used to hate it. I'd go, oh, Mick, what are you wearing? You smell great. And he'd tell me, and I'd go and buy it. And he hated having somebody else in the band with the same cologne, so he'd have to keep changing his cologne. <laughs> yeah, it was always a sneak, so, uh, yeah, but super. You know, so it's a hard question. That's a, that's a hard one, you know. Um, when you get the chance to uh, rock out and play Led Zeppelin, really, I mean, like, come on, let's get there. Let's get to the core and the base of this. Led Zeppelin music so fantastic. What song gets you excited? And I'm sure it changes. Oh, it can do. It, it all depends. Uh, You'd be amazed. Um, I always say goosey moments, you know, when I'm playing the show. I, I'm very fortunate. I have this a side project that started back in 2010 as a kind of a – I was going to do it once, <laughs> one, one time round. At the time, it was 28 years, 28 shows for 28 years my father had passed. Well, since then, we're coming up to 41 years in September. Um, since he passed, and it's our 11th year uh, doing Jason Bonham's Les Zeppelin Evening. So yeah. uh, it was never planned to be this way, but the reaction we got from people. So um, for us, um, Going to California is one of those songs when we play the Greek and usually it's sold out and you've got that vibe of the evening and everything's cool. Yeah. When they start that song, I mean, even talking about it, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's and as he so, as he goes, spent as soon as he says the first words, the audience take over, yeah, and they sing it, and he just doesn't have to. We're just playing it, and they're singing the whole thing, and that that is um, that's very very special for me, uh, and I always go. Why are you doing this? This I'm not even playing on this song. Why? Why? This is such an amazing uh, response. And uh, so, yeah, when when uh, that would be one of those moments that no one ever thinks, you know, because I'm not even playing on it. Yeah. But being sat there and watching, mm -hmm. 
the reaction you get from a song like that. Um, and, and things like those, those throwaway lines, like from Song Remains the Same, uh, when Robert says, does anybody remember laughter when we do Stairway? And when it comes to that part, everybody shouts out in the audience, does anybody remember laughter? Uh, just those are those uh, little things. But uh, as a player, I mean, I always love watching the reaction from from Kashmir when, when we start that song, uh, keeping it slow and steady. That That's the key to that song, slow and steady in the pocket, in the groove, making it that steam train. So that's all we've been for me. All right. So Jason Bonham's with me right now, and I want to play Rock and Tell. Rock and Tell is like show and tell, just like the kindergartners do, but with yeah. much cooler stuff. <laughs> What items can you uh, let us geek out over? I mean, obviously, I just want to walk around behind you because there's a thousand and one things well, to touch. But oh, why don't you um, pull out some favorite items? And uh, uh, I'm here. Out. Obviously, you can see this is um, one of my many, many uh, DW drum kits. But this one is happens to be uh, – I used this for about eight years with JBLZE. And this one has been the key – drums for the whole of the lockdown sessions but they're all carbon fiber they are specially made um dw have them custom made for me because i'm a lucky person <laughs> um, and nobody else can have them uh so yeah so these are they're carbon fiber with a chrome uh wrap finish and then when we started doing the filming i didn't really have any good pictures behind me so uh, a fan sent me a poster of Led Zeppelin, but with me on drums. So I was very honoured to have a poster that was available to buy with saying Led Zeppelin, but it was me on drums. So that got put in the prime position for the cameras. Um, others are, oh, the, on the wall there, mm -hmm. uh, there is a beautiful a beautiful one of a kind uh, Stratocaster that was given to me by the maker himself. Um, can you can you pull it down and bring it closer? I, I will. One second. Still wearing my side of the car. Just, just an excuse to like to walk away, man. This is a this is a, a Bill Nash. This is he came up to me. I, he goes, "Do you play guitar?" And I said, "No." He said, "Does your son play guitar?" I said, yes. He went, here you go, have this. So um, I look at it and go, didn't you have any new ones? <laughs> um, I mean, it's just very vintage, very old looking, but it's all they're all vintage parts and put together. So, And it plays wonderfully, I'm told, from the people. I always like to have a room that you can play in. There's always everything's here at hand. You can't be an excuse like, oh, I've forgotten my pick. There you go. Oh, I haven't got a guitar. There you go. Oh, there's no bass equipment. There it is. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. But I will give up one, one story. Okay. So when we came to do Heroes, iPad in hand. So, like, how are we going to do the, that, Right, so I had this. And that is still on the track today. Wow. With me doing the... That is a cool uh, program. And it's just a Japanese... I was like, I couldn't figure out how to... On the original, there's an Ebo guitar thing. It vibrates above the string. So Sammy's like, well, I'll do it with some feedback. But I can still hear the just in the background, you can still hear the arena where I did this. Um, so there's a little insight, little cheating moment there for, you know, it's one of those things, if it sounds right, use it. Don't hey, think, was, well, if you're not don't cheating, think you just try that. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about your necklaces. This is a uh, this is the thing of drummers. You lean forward. It catches on your drums, they break. So this is the collection of all the different necklaces 
that I've had from my King Baby stuff, from just some tribal stuff that fans give me. Yeah. Then my sister had this uh, made. She was making jewelry at the time. And, and when you get it, it's textured. It's white gold and it's all in little parts. And uh, um, there was other stuff. There was then, of course, my little St. Christopher. There was a feather that broke off recently, which is bad news, even though I was like, oh no, Robert, you've fallen. Um, I always have Robert's sign. Normally it's a, just a single feather and my, next to my dad's as they were close. So just, you know, just general jingle jangle stuff. <laughs> that Additional percussion upon your body. It does. Honestly, it's amazing what you... Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard some of the drum tracks of Dad. Dad didn't have, use any jewellery, but he grunted and moaned. And I was like, how on earth did they get away with, or like, oh, 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 behind the drum kit when you listen to him play? It's, you can hear all these uh, yells and, 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 and whoops and whistles. So, yeah, yeah very, very cool. That's very awesome. Hey, thank you so much for spending so much time with us today. We really appreciate it here at Access TV. Uh, no, make sure you. everyone watching goes out there and grabs the new Sammy Hagar and the, uh, the Circle. It's a new album. It's the Lockdown 2020 Sessions. Something tells me we will get a 2021 version, though, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but let's hope it's not called Lockdown. Uh, maybe it's the, the open, open the doors and, you know, what we the goal is obviously to... Once it is safe, um, we are looking into every aspect. We are a band that loves to play live, obviously. Um, both my my Zeppelin guys and um, uh, and with Sammy in the Circle. We hope to continue our touring this this summer if if it's all back and, and going to be safe for us to do that. So as you say, you know, come and see us at a place nearby. Yep. It it is the most fun you'll have with your clothes on this year. I promise you. I love it. Thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate your time. Thank you.